Okay, I'm gonna talk about taking my VW transmission apart. And the first thing you have to remove once you get it out is the final drive cover, which is the thing on the side. And I believe it's an M8 bolt, or sorry, an M8 nut. And you just take them off, it's pretty easy. And so we're gonna do that. And I also pulled off the uh, these little Geez, they're, they're flanges. I call them like earmuffs for the transmission. I just pull mine out. But inside of it, there is a, a, a cap that you can pop out with a screwdriver. And if you do that, you probably can't use it again. And so you have to buy new ones every time you do it. So you pop out this cap, and then inside of that cap is a circlip that you have to remove, which is a pain in the ass. And once you get the circlip out, you can then remove that flange and it just kind of pulls out. So, yeah. Okay, I'm still removing the final drive cover. This is pretty darn boring and I have a sped up version of this video that just does it all in about two or three minutes and it's much more entertaining. Instead, I will just kind of talk through this a little bit. So, if you don't know, the final drive cover has those I think M8 nuts and the nut has a lock washer after it and then a regular washer. And so that's the order it should be, nut, lock washer, regular washer. And they all should have them. I'm taking the found drive cover off on the right hand side of the transmission or known as the passenger side. And I read somewhere that it's easier to just take the passenger side off so that's why I'm doing that. And that is what I'm doing right now. I also decided to take the one off on the other side just for whatever reason. I can't remember if this transmission I was taking apart to use for parts or if I was actually rebuilding this particular one. And just so you should know, I'm not an expert at doing this. I've only taken apart and put together a few transmissions. And this is kind of my ad hoc process that I figured out for rem from reading the Bentley manual. And so if you don't have one of the VW Bentley manuals, you should definitely get it. It has a lot of the torque specs. I'll go over what I see in the manual as I do this, and that way you can kind of know without having it. But I highly recommend it. Okay, so right about here, I was getting the left final drive cover removed, and I don't think you need to do this if you're just going to take out the gear stack, but if you want to use the transmission for something else, you might need to, or replace the seals or whatever. But anyways, I'm going to take it off, and once I started to take it off, I realized that the transmission was starting to leak oil everywhere, and so I wanted to just kind of pull it forward and drain the rest of that oil out, and so that way I didn't have to deal with it. And so that's what I'm doing right now. I'm feeling underneath it for the drain oil plug and I'm going to take it out and drain it somewhere. I guess I have something to catch it with because I would not just drain it onto my floor. But I made this video a while ago and I don't really remember what I'm doing. I do see that yellow cap over on the side and so that's probably the uh, drain pan that I have that's going into. So I'm just getting the last little bits of the oil out and just kind of waiting. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Kind of boring.
So here, me, here you see me looking at the oil plug and I'm putting it back in loosely and just shoving it back. Now let's check out what I have to do next. It's been a while from when I made this video and recorded it to actually kind of doing a voiceover about it. So I kind of forget what I did. So let's see. Looks like I put a rag down probably to capture any oil that might spill out. And I'm just using a piece of wood to tap on the little tabs there at the top and bottom of the transmission so I can get that final drive cover off. And this just makes it a little bit easier. I hate hitting metal on metal. I feel like it tends to mar surfaces and just as bad. And so I use little wood box to kind of just soften the blow and get things off. And so that's what I'm doing here. I'm just like pounding it off a little bit at a time to get it off. Lots of pounding. And at this point, I can kind of slip off that final drive cover. There's a bushing on the side there, and you can replace those. Once you pull the final drive cover off, the whole gear stack will pretty much easily pull out. And this is why you want to pull it out on the passenger side, the right hand side. It just will easily kind of fall out. I'm just kind of feeling the bearings to kind of feel like, see what problems I might have. And with this particular transmission, I think it was really popping out a third or fourth, uh, probably third, and that was the problem. And so I had to replace some of the gears and uh, from another transmission. So if you're not familiar with names, the big thing I removed is the differential and it just allows each wheel to spin independently in case of slippage or going around corners. Okay, so inside of here there's a snap ring. And so I want to remove the snap ring and then I can un push this reverse gear, I can remove the snap ring right here out of the way, and then the reverse gear will just unscrew. But I want to make sure I keep the same amount of reverse gear thread showing, because that might affect something, but I'm not really sure. So I'm going to mark it. Snap ring pretty easily goes aside. Reverse gear. So I don't think I really needed to do this, but I did anyways. I just tried to etch on the thing to mark where the review gear was uh, threaded onto. But really there's only, you just screw it on and it just kind of works and it's really not necessary to mark it. But I'm overly cautious with things, so I'm going over to grab a pen so I can actually mark it and figure out how many threads are showing on the reverse gear in case I need to put it in the exact same spot. I don't think this is necessary at all, but I did anyways, I get to watch. Off. Yeah, just a little bit 
Slip the reverse gear back, go in front, screw it out, and it's screwed out. So now that's unattached. Cool. Okay, so now that the differential is out and the reverse gear is loose, I need to remove the nose cone. And this is pretty darn simple. Just take all the nuts off the front of the nose cone and drop them off. Super simple. washer cool cool drift knock them up knock them out so the nose cone wasn't really moving off for me and i decided to kind of just give it a little bit extra oomph and just pound it off a little bit with i just have a piece of metal around stock that would kind of tapped it with to loosen it up because it was kind of glued on and when you take it off, what you see in my right hand is the what they call the hockey puck. I'll have to look up the real name for that. And this is the shifter. This is the thing that actually shifts it from one gear so to another. So the shifter was right in the middle one. Hopefully I can see that. I can remember it. Shifter is right in the middle. So I'm just trying to figure out what I have to do to remove stuff. And I go back and forth from reading the manual to kind of just looking at it and figuring out what I need to do. Okay, so the next thing I decided to try and figure out how to remove was the the uh, front housing, I think they call it the gear house, the gear housing, I don't know. And so I'm just taking these nuts off and seeing how I can figure out to get it off. Just kind of experimenting.
Okay, so the front portion is called the gear carrier, and in order to remove it, I realized I actually have to remove the bolts holding the pinion gear on. But before I did that, I grabbed my torque wrench because I am highly curious as to exactly what torque they're currently set to. The Bentley manual has values that they publish, but I never quite trust what they publish or just, I don't know, I want to just see what it was at. And so what I'm doing right here is I'm just sticking my torque wrench on and uh, just pushing it until I can actually see the bolt move. And once I see the bolt move, the value before it clicked is kind of probably what torque value it was at. And so that's what I'm doing right now is establishing what torque value those were set at and then noting it somewhere. Less than 70. Say 60. Move. say it's somewhere from 60 to 70. Try 65, 60-ish. 65. Go 65. 65 foot-pounds. Maybe 70. So once I figured out what torque it was, I actually go to town removing it. And I think I'm just using my torque wrench to start it because it has a lot of leverage and then I'll probably switch to my regular ratchet that I like a lot. And I'll remove the four bolts that hold on this guy. If you have a style that, th there are some other transmissions that have a some type of screw attachment that requires a very special tool to remove that. I haven't dealt with that and uh, if you do have that type, you probably have to get this tool that will actually slip over the pinning gear and remove the pinning gear nut. Otherwise, you won't be able to do it. The four bolt style like this one is so easy to remove compared to that other style from what I have here. And so I'm just getting these nuts out and then I can actually remove the gear carrier and the pinning gear, which is a press fit in. And so I'm going to actually have to use some force to do it. Looks like it has some Loctite on it.
Okay, so now that all the bolts are removed that hold the pinion gear on, I'm gonna use leverage and wood to just push this piece out. And so I'm gonna go find a scrap piece and just use some leverage to push it out. It's really super simple. And uh, find a piece of wood, just use whatever you have. There's a special tool that you can buy to do this, but you totally don't need that. And so I'm gonna leverage it out, it'll pop. And once it pops, I can go and hit the uh, gear carrier a bit with some pieces of metal to kind of just get it out. So here we go, and pop, and it moves. Easy peasy. It just kicks right out. Cool. So at this point, it wasn't moving anymore, and I probably could have moved it with some more leverage, and I decided to kind of just tap on the gear carrier a little bit and the uh, back of the bolts or whatnot to kind of move it a little bit. And this kind of worked to help get it out. As I pull it out, the little reverse gear is just falling off in here. Oh, I'm not sure how to, how to get that back in. It's going to be tricky. So I kind of just let the reverse gear fall out and I was going to figure it out later. And now what I'm trying to do is remove the circ clip that holds this uh, whole gear stack on and so I kind of just pried it off with the circlip tool and screwdriver, flathead screwdriver. How do you remove these things?
washer dish side down. Now I can press it out. So for the next step, you do have to have a press. There might be other clever ways to remove it, but my friend Jason has a press and so he let me borrow it. And so I just set the gear carrier up on the press blocks and then kind of got it in line with where it needed to be and pressed it out and it kind of worked. Let's watch me do it. moving. Pinion's gonna bottom out in just a second. Aha! Finished. I hope. Not quite done. So close. So the trouble I'm having is this shifter gear that you can actually just push it out and I didn't realize that and you can pop it out and put it back in and I didn't know about that. Let's see if we can't coerce it. I think you could swing these out of the way.
first one. That's the way it's got to go back together. It's on here directly. is a part. 